Hey, this is Vinny Fiorello from the Punk Rock Museum, and you're listening to The Rad Dad Show. Hey, all you rad dads out there. Vinny, thanks for joining me on The Rad Dad Show. Um, I'm going to start by asking, who are you? Well, I'm Vinny Fiorello, and I am one of the co-founders of the Punk Rock Museum in Las Vegas, Nevada. Prior to that, uh, drummer, lyricist for Less Than Jake. I owned Fueled by Ramen in the past, Paper and, the Pla- Paper and Plastic in the past, and uh, also a father to my daughter, uh, Lily Fiorello. So there it right. is. Which is, which is why you're here today to talk yep. about uh, being a dad. So uh, how old's your, your daughter? She's 11. Okay. So just, gra- just graduated elementary school. And oh, that's a big one. To, to middle school. And that starts uh, the second week of August. She starts middle school. So it's oh, big. Oh, that, yeah. is, it, is it always that early for you guys down there? Yeah, I mean, it, it's it, the end of school usually is at the end of May. And oh, okay. So it doesn't, uh, I grew up in New Jersey, so I was uh, at the end of June is when our school used to sort of uh, wrap up and then summer would start. But here, because of the heat and things like that, we go a little bit earlier. Got it. That makes sense. Yeah, because my, uh, so I've got a seven-year-old who's in grade two, and then um, I've got a four-year-old as well who's going to start kindergarten next year. But my grade two, she's wrapping up in a couple weeks here, and then oh, they yeah. don't start until after, I think, uh, September 5th or something like that. So that's a, a nice big break. Yeah, yeah, it's awesome. Um, well, this is a rad dad show. So I'm going to ask you, do you consider yourself a rad dad? I think so. Yeah, you know, I, 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 uh, Yes, I do. Because if there's a point in time where if my daughter's like, hey, like, I'm I'm wondering about, you know, this country, or I'm wondering how to like tie dye or silkscreen or how are records made or, hey, like, what's the best restaurant or the best food or what should I try? I can answer those with with pretty good uh, uh, proficiency, uh, just from touring and traveling and and being around uh, the globe a few times. So I consider myself a rad dad. Awesome. Well, we kind of try and answer the question on this show, like, wh- well, what makes a rad dad? So a couple of things you said are, you know, it kind of seems like it's like imparting wisdom, but it's kind of from a, maybe um, you've picked that up in a bit of a, a unique way as compared to most dads out there. Yeah, I, I think that, you know, being being a, a, a dad, there's two things, rad dad. It, it's one being present, right? And yeah. being like sort of, if there's the, those questions that get asked and you have to be present enough to go, hey, here's, you know, from my experience, this is what I think. And that doesn't necessarily mean, oh, you have to travel the world to be able to sort of impart your sort of, you know, uh, that general wisdom onto your kids, right? It just has to be present enough to answer and give it a thoughtful, thoughtful answer. So I think that that's part one. And then just, just generally, man, it's that, that having kids beings, uh, always being connected, right? And that someone, you know, someone said to me one time, it's like, hey, you get like one shot at these things, right? With your kids and you have to be there. Right. And I, I took that to heart, you know, as another touring mu- musician dad. And I, I try to, to be connected and I try to be present. Uh, so uh, there it is. So it's, yeah, it's, I guess it's um, like being present, but, but uh, not just like being present physically. It's um, like emotionally and, and as that support system for your, yeah, you know, uh, uh, accessible, right? Like, yeah. and it doesn't matter if we're in the same room. Uh, it matters that when uh, I'm needed, I'm there. F- phone call, text message, you know, uh, whatever it is, or just walking from her room into uh, my office where I'm at and just going, hey, I'm, I'm thinking about this, or hey, there's a Minecraft update today. You want to see what, what the Minecraft update is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're, we'll check it out. You know, talking about what my favorite superhero is or my favorite villain and you know we watched venom one and two 
yesterday. She had nice. never seen that, right? And I, I never saw it either. I saw Spider Man, but uh, so we watched that and ate popcorn and kicked it and talked about some stuff. And and that's the interconnectedness of being a dad to me, anyway. Uh, being being there for for the the easy softball questions, right? You know, yeah. and then uh, being there for for the harder stuff too. Well, for the harder stuff, I think like there's a trust component there too, there, right? There like be, they yeah. trust you to like to come to you first of all with the the question, um, but then to I guess really value what you have to say. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I think that the trust is is super important for for being a parent, right? Like a, a kid's not going to come to you if there's no trust there, and it. Your, your kid's not going to come to you if they think what you're saying is absolute lunacy, right? Yeah. Or, or they don't get heard. So of course, Ben, there, there's, but trust is that connectedness that, that I talked about too, right? So it's a component of it. So how did, I guess, where, where did that, where did you pick that up from? Where did you pick up that philosophy from? You talked about um, like other touring musicians, like it, has that community been important to you in terms of like uh, mentorship as a dad at all or, or advice or? You know what? I, so I'll, I'll go back with this and just to shine some light on it. It's that like my dad, my, both my parents divorced, my dad left early on. Right. So I knew that when it was time for me to be a dad, that you know breaking that cycle that making sure that for all those things that my dad wasn't there for that I was there for it was important and it was uh very in in the front of my brain as I became a dad that hey you have to you have to to be there right like there's no half stepping on on this because I knew how it felt like oh I, I want to ask my dad this but he wasn't there and that's not like necessarily sour grapes or like kind of throwing that like emotional baggage out there it was just something that I knew when it was time for me to be a dad that that I had to be there for it you know uh everything emotionally available physically available and that that's important but to go back into it of course like when you're out on tour and you have dads that are out on tour you always talk about, hey, a, a back home and, uh, you know, what's going on? And, oh, there's this rub that's happening or everything's cool. And this is why it's cool. And this was a, a, a speed bump that happened. So you, you, you kind of throw everything into the back of your brain. So when things like that come up, if there is that speed bump, you, you could roll in the Rolodex of fellow band dads and go, oh yeah, I, I remember that. Or if it's brand new territory, uh, you, you talk about it. I find when I was touring, I talked about, you know, my daughter a lot, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah you know, I just, I was on Zoom uh, with her and uh, oh yeah, she did this or, you know, this is what's going on at home. So it becomes that, uh, that, ever present subject as you're yeah. taking your way through well not only is it like really important to you right it becomes sort of the center of your universe but it's kind of a, a an interesting universal connection that we have to other parents right like it's something a common experience like no matter if you're like ultra rich or you know you have no money or you're you know this ethnicity or that ethnicity, it's it's like the experience of being a parent, there's so many similarities that we share. Obviously, there's differences too, but it's why we can, you know, you and I, having never met, we can sit and have a conversation about our kids for an hour because, you know, it's a it's a shared experience. We all kind of need to learn from each other, right? I, I agree. And I think that, you know, there there's more similarities than than we would recognize prior to becoming dads or parents, right? Totally. So what once you become that there's a whole lot of, of area that's like, oh yeah, that happened to me. Oh yeah, that happened to me. Oh yeah, that happened to me. And you can kind of go down. And of course there's unique experiences that are, you know, to you and your family. And, but there's a whole lot of overlap uh, with having kids, you know, and uh, that, that is an automatic uh, uh, connectedness to, to other parents, like you were saying. Yeah, it's like, um, yeah, I, I don't really know how to how to 
uh, qualify it, but it, it definitely is like, it, it changes your perspective, right. And, and sort of, uh, understanding other people and what they're going through too. Like, I think about, you know, you take your kid to, to soccer or whatever, and you're talking to, to other parents that are there. And, um, maybe before you had kids, you never would have talked to that guy. Cause you just think, Oh, we don't have anything in common, but now all of a sudden you've got this like common bond between, between yourselves. You see people a little bit differently. It changes your perspective on people in the world a little bit. I think so, man. Uh, and just from traveling too, it's, uh, you think that there's, oh, you know, Tokyo, Japan, it's so different. And the people that live there are so different or the people that live in, you know, on the Black Sea, you know, in Russia. So it's so different. But uh, that, you know, people who, who like punk rock are, are punk rockers worldwide. Yeah. Dads who are dads are dads worldwide, man. Everyone is very linked, man. The, People think the world is this like massive place, but it's really not, man. We we share so much and have so much in common that like people who are, you know, are this black and white thing, oh, they would never know or they don't know, or uh, you know, we don't have anything in common. Oh, yeah, you you really do, man. The world yeah. is such a small place and there's such an overlap on a lot of like ideas and ideals. Uh, especially being a parent and uh, I, I wish, I wish that, that people would kind of recognize that fact. Right. Yeah. Parenting is a good example where it's like really obvious to you that, Hey, we have this shared experience, but you're right. Like, I kind of feel like as when you're a kid, like you grow up trying to like compartmentalize things and, and like put things in a box, right? Like, Oh, there's these kind of people or those kind of people. That's how you see the world. And as yeah. you get older, if you can kind of open your mind, which not everybody is that good at doing, but if you can kind of open your mind to the idea that, Hey, we're all actually pretty similar out here. Um, you know, it, you, you get so much more out of life. Well, you know, it, it's, it's definitely a headspace, right? It's, coming out of the gate, you're either looking for the differences or you're yeah. looking for the similarities, right? And the, the beautiful thing about being a kid, man, it's that you're not, you're not worried about, you know, race and you're not worried about yeah. religion. You're not worried about, you're just worried about, hey, we're just like in the same class together and we're, we're doing these things. And, and that, man, to be able to, as a dad, to be able to sort of be a fly on the wall and and look at how kids interact with, with each yeah. other it's a beautiful thing man because i wish that that as adults we could kind of share that hey it's you know colorblind about things and and not really worry about religion or you know political leanings and things like that it's or crazy. age or you know gender yeah. or, you know any of that stuff like yeah, it's crazy. My, my daughter was at the park the other day. I had her at the park and like uh, another kid came up to her. He's a little bit older, but just came up to her and was like, hey, do you want to play with me? And it's like, every time I see that, I'm like, why are we not better about that as adults? Like about just going up to someone and be like, hey, how's it going? Like, you know, it, it, it's true, you know, and I, I live in a, you know, uh, while Gainesville, where I'm at is very, uh, you know, it's a university town. So it's very uh, uh, liberal, right? Uh, but Florida is very conservative. And to be able to live here and see the interactions sort of in the, the Bible belt, right? Yeah. Uh, I was like, I, I wish that sort of uh, easiness could of kids could be imparted to, to everybody else, right? And just, oh, yeah, it's cool. Like you're doing your thing and I can do mine and then everything's all right, you know? Like yeah. it's not a big deal, but Hey, that's the beautiful thing about being kids, and uh, I, I, I feel, you know, I'm, I'm happy to be able to see those things, you know, and and have it, take it to heart, you know, and go, oh, that's awesome, that's rad, you know, and it's important. I, I don't know, like I, as a dad, I've always said, you know what, you love who you love, you know, my wife as well, like, hey, you love who you love, and you, you don't have to worry about, you know, X, Y, and Z. You don't have to, you know, if someone's a different religion or religious, because we're not, that's okay. You know, yeah. the, the differences are, are the beautiful thing. And it's not like I'm like a, a hippie punk by any means or, or anything like that, or, or too religious, to be honest with you. I, I grew up a little bit religious going to church, but I don't consider myself that in, in adulthood. 
but it's just those basic things about accepting right yeah. like, I, I don't i don't want my daughter to to look at things and and uh, put everyone in a box yeah these people are this these people are this these people I don't want that. I want, I want my daughter to grow up and go not afraid of, of people who are different, you know, and uh, that, that's the, you know, to go back into we, what we're talking about. I'm ready to go on a family vacation. It's the first yep. time all of us are going out of the country, right? Awesome. But, but I, I do believe that travel, that, that is the key to being able to link a lot of concepts together when you see that i'm in ireland we flew over this huge ocean we get there and it, there's a lot of differences but there's so much the same and you'd be able to see that with your own eyes yeah uh it's different than going from florida to washington dc or going from you know uh gainesville to key west or or wherever right uh it's still uh you're in a car and you're doing that but uh to be able to fly and, and get out of this airplane that you spend eight hours in and go, Oh my God, this is so different. But yet, Hey, it's, there's a mom and dad, there's a grocery store, there's this, there's this. It's, it's very, it's very familiar. Right. And yeah, I, it's, I, that, that travel, the travel I think is super important for kids. To be that's something to you would have would pick up as a musician too. Right. If you're touring, you, you kind of pick up how important that is. Um, and so that's a, yeah, that's a great thing that you can kind of bring to your family um, to, to kind of help open their eyes. Where, where were you in your, like, in your uh, career, I guess, when you became a dad? What was going on around that time? You know what? It was just, you know, we, we were in our, you know, Lesson Jake, you know, was uh, 30, been around for 30 years, right? So we were in our 20 third year of being a band so it was autopilot right and yeah. when uh i was gonna become a dad uh, uh our bass player raj also uh was like you know, we're we're gonna be you know i'm gonna be a dad too you know and and oh that's cool so we had we you know we were able to uh kind of surf that wave together right at that time but the only thing different it, it was really like prior to being a dad to being a dad was the workflow of being creative, right? Where prior to being a dad, I, I could be up, you know, four in the morning. And I, if, the, if that mood struck and that inspiration struck, I could just do my thing. And then uh, after being a dad, you sort of have to carve out time to be creative and, and yep. to do those things that you want to do on that creative, like sort of uh, hemisphere, right? So. Uh, it was just time, time, a, a lesson in time management, right? Uh, yeah, which is probably like we're talking about a bit of a universal experience. Like everybody uh, has to deal with that. Okay, I'm a dad now. I've got other responsibilities. I, you know, I can't be like sleeping till noon. Got to get up with my kid at six in the morning or whatever it is. So you you have to carve that out. But now you're in this dynamic where you've got, you know, four or five, six people. You need to work around schedules for everybody. So does that kind of become complicated too of course you know yeah. i mean that's that's uh but that's part of part of life it was always complicated right yeah. I, I you know when you're in a band and you're working around people's schedules but you're also working around people's creativity and, and wanting to add to the idea or take away from the idea and uh put their thumbprint on it so they could kind of take possession of it so it was already like a, a shark infested water to navigate, right? And then the yeah. creative sphere, right? But like uh, adding adding that being a dad and then having two new dads and then the, Chris became a dad a little bit after that, right? So yeah. uh, that that's a lot of a lot of schedule that you have to kind of jump into and, and figure out. And uh, I I always found for me that I, I needed to make sure my schedule was working for me, right? So, and then I could plug in to the band, I could plug into other things that I had been involved in. So uh, if, if my brain, you know, where I'm from always, I think that if, if I, it's not working for me, it could never work for me and other people, right? So uh, 
sussing out the schedule was uh, the first and foremost thing to be able to get done after becoming a new dad. Yeah, you're you're prioritizing. Okay, I, I need this to be right as a foundation for this next thing, right? So yeah, that's that's the challenge. Like, you know, it sounds is. easy when we talk about it like that, but in the day to day, it's really tough. It's it's tough, you know, and and as as a creative, it's it's very tough because you you don't you you you're not picking and choosing when inspiration strikes and things like that. And it took me a hot second to be able to go, okay, uh, I'm going to carve out this hour and train myself to go, okay, now it's time to be creative, right? So uh, I, I, I always was a big fan of like writing myself notes. So uh, I would, you know, have notes early on prior to being a dad, I would have, you know, come home from tour and I would have like, a sock full of like scraps of paper and like, like oh, oh this is cool you know oh, this is lyric is great and and kind of parcel it out like that and then with cell phones when mobile phones sort of uh, became attached to you it was a side I had a sidekick right with a flip screen right I just would write myself notes about lyrics about like song ideas art ideas anything like that and then when it was time to be creative I'd open that up and be able to sort of like parcel out ideas and kind of shuffle them around to, okay, this is what this is. This is what this is and kind of go down my list. And then when time was up, you know, there'd be some sneaky moments too. you know, there's a nap going on. Let me try to like finish like these lyrics or finish something right in that creative like headspace, but knowing that it could end at when that nap ended, yep, the creative session ended as well. Right. right. <laughs> yeah. You can't just like sit down and, okay, I've got an hour. I'm going to write a song now. You've got to find a way to get in that zone. Right. Which you maybe didn't have to think as much about before you'd kind of wait until you were in the zone and then you'd. Yeah. I, I thought I, 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 I was always a night owl. Right. So yeah. uh, the work that I would do would be between, you know, uh, midnight and like six in the morning. Crazy. And, and then, uh, later later it was like oh well you know i i'm uh being a dad between midnight and six in the morning right like there there's stuff happening right yeah. and later later you know when my daughter became a little bit older then it was oh she's sleeping through the night and i can shuffle around but uh you can't you can't live on a empty gas tank uh for for not years. for long yeah yeah so. so how how did your like we kind of talked a little bit about this earlier but like what about when you're you're touring and you're away you talked about the importance of being connected so i mean we've got facetime and stuff like that but but how like what was your what is your strategy when you need to be away you know what it, it's it it really is man it's it's leaning heavily on technology right yeah. number one and, and we're we're living in a time and have been that technology is is uh good enough to be able to see somebody on the phone via facetime and uh it's different than getting a text or getting you know an email from somebody you could read the face you could read an emotion you can read a lot of things by seeing them right but uh traveling uh meant and still does mean if i'm away to las vegas for the museum and i come home uh and the stuff that i do for work it also means being extra available all those other times. So if I was on tour and, and for three weeks, but that would also mean that I would come home and be home for weeks at a time and present, you know, uh, I could be, you know, uh, present 24 hours a day if I was needed, but uh, here and right. not uh, eight hours at a job or 10 hours at a job and then come home and then, uh, you know, she would go to bed an hour later or two hours later. I was yep. here and and a hundred percent committed to uh, family, right? And uh, being off of tour, and it's the same thing where I working remotely here in Florida, but that gives me uh, you know direct contact all the time with my family and, and be present all the time. You know, so I, I, that's the the sort of trade off. You know, you travel, and you have really have to try to communicate, and you really have to try to stay connected. Uh, but then when you come home, 
your your availability is 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 a hundred percent. You can capitalize on that time you have together, um, well, which is maybe which is more than probably a lot of people have, right? Um, like you said, you're working a nine to five. You got those you know couple hours after supper time to you know hang out before it's bedtime again, and so that's a different lucky. experience. Yeah, if you're lucky, right? Uh, yeah. in, in some cases, you know, if you're you're working, you get home, and there's a little bit of traffic from your your nine to five, yeah. right? And uh, you eat dinner, and then it's a uh, bath and bedtime, and you maybe get that an hour in. Yeah, or you do shift work, and so you're working overnight, and you miss, you know, you don't get to see the kids after school or whatever it is, right? Yeah. the The craziest thing for me. Uh, traveling uh, early on with my daughter it was the, the how fast things progressed right so I, I would leave and uh you know she was you know doing x and then when i would get back two weeks later or three weeks later that x was gone and it was replaced with y and z yeah so to be able you know to remove yourself for a little bit and then come back you really can see how like fast things progress right yeah. and being like sort of in the mix day to day and every day and and all that you don't see it as much because you you don't you're not recognized these small movements forward but yeah. being gone for two weeks and then coming back you're like oh my god like this is so much more than it was before you know walking yeah. talking learning like whatever it is it was going so fast and I couldn't believe it and it, it there was moments where I was like I'm missing a lot right yeah. and and my wife was you know who, who's totally awesome man like and in essence being a single mom when I would when I would leave right yeah. uh she's like oh you're fine everything's fine man like you, you know everything's cool and everything's fine you don't don't str- you know don't stress yourself on it but there was points where I was like I I left at this and I missed this, this sort of a transition to this. And it just jumped right over it in a three week time. It's like, wow. Yeah. I is- mean, they literally like, you know, one day they're not rolling over and the next day they are. And then it's like one day they're not crawling yet. And then the next day they are, it's like, yeah, yeah you can, you can miss those things. I mean, every, yeah, this, I think it's a good discussion because everybody's different and ha- like, you know, their situation in life, can they be around, or, you know, I think we had we had this um i've talked about this before on the show but we we participated in this like dad's group online dad's group during the pandemic it was through the ymca here and it was just like dad's talking it was just like a way to connect and there was one dad on there that um he was a truck driver and he was talking about the same thing like being away for you know a week or a couple days at a time or whatever and some of the same things i was like man this sounds like a lot of the musicians we talk to because it's kind of a, a really similar experience so there's all these different permutations of of that and we just kind of have to figure it out together you mentioned your partner like how how important is that i guess that relationship or that discussion around um, your unique schedule you can't be in a band and a dad without a strong partner right and and i and when i say partner i mean that like in a very specific way right it's that you know they have to let you be gone, but also uh, hear you out from across the country or yeah. across the globe. And, uh, you know, they're here as, you know, parenting in the present, you're, uh, you know, in London, England going, I think uh, our daughter should be doing X, Y, Z, you know, so that partnership really is like, very generous on their part, you know, uh, and going, okay, I'll, I'll hear you out because we are partners, you know, and I'll hear you out and uh, be be that sort of rock in that foundation when you're gone. Uh, and I'll take that from my time and impart in that. And uh, it, it's, you can't, you can't do it without somebody who, who is letting you do it. Right. I, I like the, like, I like the term partner um, way, way more than spouse, because like spouse or, you know, girlfriend or what, that's just like kind of like a, a relation, like, okay, we're, we're connected because we got married or whatever. But 
partner implies something a little bit more like we're in this together, right? Like your situation, it's not just you're going on tour. It's like our family, dad's going on tour. Um, that's just part of the, the, whatever the molecule of our family. Yeah. And that's one like spinning atom in the molecule. So, um, it, it, you kind of, ha- you really have to be in it all together and be on the same team. You do. You, you can't, like I said, you, you couldn't be a touring musician and a dad without a partner who was allowing that to happen. Yeah. Right. And, and not in the way of giving you permission to go. Right. But freeing your time up and your responsibility up and them picking up the slack of you being gone. So yeah, yeah that is allowing you to go, you know? Yeah. And so for me, uh, you know, uh, Darcy is who, who uh, is, is my wife, right? And uh, she's a strong woman, right? And you, you had, you know, when I'm leaving, she becomes a single mom, right? Yeah. So everything is, is her responsibility. That's the day to day. And uh, if she wasn't as strong and if she wasn't as resilient, uh, it would have made it much harder for me to be on tour. Right. Right. So, uh, or made the, the, my time on tour not be as fun and rad and fulfilling mm-hmm. and all those things that go with like being in a band and, and touring. Right? right. If, yeah, if you're stressed or you're like worried about resentment or whatever, like that's going to just kill the whole thing. Right. Yeah. You spend, you, you'd spend your time on and off stage worrying about, you know, what's going on at home, you know, yeah. and, and uh, it, I, I've seen uh, some friends and, and, and other people in bands, go through that situation where, you know, you have someone who was at home with their kid and they were pining for them to come back and you're out having fun while I'm here. Yeah. Care of everything. And it's not, it's not fun, man. It's, it's a very hard situation to be in because there's that on one hand, you're out sort of uh, kind of fulfilling your, your, you know, uh, dreams of being a musician and touring and, and being in a band. And then you have your partner at home going, I'm, I'm shouldering all the responsibility, you know, all of the parenting, yeah. all of everything. So uh, you, you, you couldn't do it. I couldn't do it without someone who was at home, who was like hundred percent on point. And, but that brings this, it's communication, man. Yes. Like if yeah. you weren't open and you weren't honest and you weren't talking about it, well, sure, everybody gets frustrated. Sure, everybody has a moment of sort of like resentment. I, I don't want to, and I'll play the story in a second, but like, uh, you know, I, I don't want to continually to be left holding this while you're out doing that, right? Yeah. And uh, you, you have to have this open line of communication. You have to always be, talking and connecting not only to your your son or daughter but connecting to your partner going what can I do what can I do when I'm home and there there's two things that uh, I would add to this is that uh, when I would come home I would you know go okay uh, you should go you should take a few days go on vacation when I when I came home just for her to decompress and like uh, just chill out right And uh, that was a good thing to do, right? And and a solid, just solid all around, just to be able to take herself out of it and decompress for a second and then come back to it and be like, all right, you know? But there, there was one, there's a, a story and I won't like sort of go into it, but uh, th- there was a conversation that I had, it was with an ex, right? Uh, and she goes, you know what your problem is and your friend's problems, meaning the, the people in the band, right? Yep. And I go, well, I, you're, you're definitely going to tell me what. <laughs> so uh, let's do it. Uh, she goes, you know, I feel like that uh, you're the balloon and you're allowed, the wind blows and you're allowed to like fly everywhere, but you're only allowed to fly everywhere because there's a string attached to you 
and I'm holding the string. You're allowed to go where the wind blows because I am the anchor. I am holding on, making sure you don't blow away somewhere. And it hit so hard. Wow. That was like, I understand. Like, and uh, it, it didn't change the fact of like who we were and the path that we were on to be a part. Yeah. But I understood in, in my relationship that I am in right now that you can't always expect someone to hold on to that string. Right. right? That you, my job wasn't just to be like, I'm freewheeling. I don't give a shit because yeah. I know someone is taking care of all the important stuff at home. It was, hey, you also have to share in that responsibility yeah. always. And especially being a dad, you always have to share that responsibility. You always have to, to look over your shoulder and go, am I doing things right? Like, am I here? Like, and am I present? Am I connected? And like, am, am I doing right by my partner? Am I doing right by my kids? Am I doing right by my bandmates, by my family? You start to ask and you have to ask all those questions to fully uh, make sure you're not uh, just letting someone be the person who holds the balloon. Right. Yeah, that's the complexity of it, right? Like that introspection and and really being honest with your yourself, but but then through that with your your partner and your family and all that stuff too. Like and and you know, am I taking care of myself too? Because there's also that piece. Um, like you you kind of have to. It's like you talked about before. You've got this like foundation, and if you if you're not okay, like you're not going to be able to support the rest of that either. And so it, it's all those pieces, and that's what's hard. Yeah, it, it, parenthood it, it, and relationships and all that stuff. It, it's really hard, man. I and I think that it, without that foundation, you know, uh, then you're just sort of building a house on sand, right? Yeah. Uh, and sooner or later, it's going to erode away. And your brain has a, a weird way of tricking you sometimes that you're not doing things right, and you know, to look at the 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 faults instead of looking for the 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 winds right and i i find myself like early on just because like you know being a, a lyric writer and sort of mining those sort of uh, emotions in a lot of ways right uh i opened myself up to more so tricking myself right so i i have to stop sometimes i'll like let you know let go of of the the leader and float a little bit and I find myself like you're terrible dad like yeah. You're, yeah, yeah, yeah. you're doing all the wrong things like your bad husband you're you're doing all these things and then I'm like okay this is just a trick because there's amount of stress yeah and there's amount of these things snap out of it there's much more wins than losses and you start to have to give yourself a pep talk because there's other people connected to you to that yeah. tether man and if you let go of it, then it starts to create a whole bunch of like turmoil inside of, of family, friends, you know, uh, son or daughter. And uh, I, 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 that, that is the constant struggle for myself is yeah. to go, okay, there's people that are connected to you and you're feeling a certain way. And I struggle with like anxiety and depression. Yeah. Like, so to be able to, uh, let go of that that darker side of it because there's other people that are interconnected to that when those things are going on right yeah that's that's like a, a huge part of why we do this too and like the stuff we do in the community is is just like establishing that connection too with other dads to to understand like I'm not alone in this like this everybody goes through this like oh this guy's talking about how he had depression you know we've had somebody on the show talk before about like I got on medication and it changed my life. It like made a huge difference. Okay. Like someone might hear that and like resonate with that. Okay. I need to, maybe that's something I need to look into or whatever. Um, and, and that's so important because I think you do get in this like imposter syndrome sort of state. I don't know if that's, if that, you know, you would characterize it that way. That's what I always say, you know, too, especially because I'm part of this show, like, you know, oh, I, I look at myself, I'm like, shit, that wasn't a rad dad moment. Like me just like unleashing on my kids there or losing my temper, you know, but you do have to like rein yourself back in sometimes be like, you know what, like, 
everybody loses their temper and like, okay, like, am I a bad dad? I don't think so. Like, here's all the the wins, right? So we have to celebrate those wins, I guess. Yeah, I mean that, and and it, it's funny because there there's a point where you go like, oh, like yeah, of course, I'm like totally rad. Like, look at look, I'm doing all this stuff and check it out. But you know, everybody has that like sort of like crack that happens, and oh, yeah. oh, a bad day or you know, bad week or or whatever it is, right? And you're not you're not your best, but yeah. not being your best doesn't mean it's bad. Yeah, you know, it's funny, like, I, it, those are sometimes some of the conversations I'll, tr- I'll try and have with my kids too. like, when I, you know, lose my temper, for example, or something like, I'll be like, what, they put that down, or, you know, whatever. And they're like, Oh, like, you raised your voice, dad, or whatever. It's like, okay, well, let's talk about this. Like, dad is stressed out. Let's, you know, it sometimes you get stressed out. I know what happens to you too. Like, how do we what, what do you what advice do you have for me to, you know, deal with my emotions? My kids will be like, try taking 10 deep breaths or like, you know, let's, let's meditate or something. You know, it's like, so we kind of work through it together. Cause I guess like, that's, that's the the role of your family is to support everybody. Right. And I think it's okay to show that I'm human too. I, you're right. You know, I, and I, I think that it, it's important, man. There's, there's not, it's not super dad, super mom. It's that, hey just it's just mom and dad and like there there's things that slip by and there's things that happen and it doesn't mean it doesn't mean anything there's uh you know it's not that you're a worse dad or mom because you had a bad day and you know it just means that you're just mom and dad just means this is life and bad days happen and people get stressed and that's just it i i i never want to be uh the dad who's like you know, I'm, I'm already very like stoic anyway, as like a person, just like I'm built that way of like, yeah, every, even in that's the, your default setting, it, it just is right. And, yeah. and not, not on purpose, not on anything. If the highest of highs or lowest of lows, I'm fairly uh, floating in a, a mid of, of stoicness somewhere. Right. Like, yeah. and that just is what it is. And I, I never want to be the, the person going, you don't have, you know, it, uh, showing that you don't have to show emotion. You don't, you know, you, it's okay to show that you're mad. It's okay to show that you're super fucking happy, right? Like, and I, I never want to be the one that's like, bottle, you know, bottle up the emotion, you know, tone it down, tamp it down. At, I, I want to be the one going, no, it's okay to be super happy and, and, and super sad. These are all, all parts of, of being, a human and and growing up and and everything like that and uh it, it's tough sometimes too when you're programmed to be like yeah everything's cool like yeah things are right and but that's that's the 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 whatever uh, is is wired that that's who who i am so it's always a like no everything's you know we're cool and you know yeah. everything's everything's happy and to try to 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 lift it and not not program uh, as a as a parent i i'm always afraid that i'm like uh you know programming by proxy you yes. know and, and sure. I, I, I never want to be like oh dude but you you know you're this way and you could see it right because most certainly yeah. i can see you know you we were speaking about your dad uh, prior to starting this and it's like I can I think back sometimes and uh, I get out of myself and I'm looking at my behavior and I'm like so much like what this was you know pri- prior to to my dad had left right I could see myself reacting the same way as memories I have of him I'm like oh my god like yeah. Are, are you really like programmed like this from so long ago to your adulthood? And the answer is simply, yeah, that does yeah. happen, man. Like, and I, I've always uh, struggled with like kind of uh, detaching myself from uh, who, who like uh, the, the important sort of uh, men in my life had been and detaching the bad where I, at least I perceive bad and detaching those things and emotions and, and habits from that and, and pushing into 
you know, mentors I've had in the past. And my grandfather was a huge role model and super important to like me growing up. So uh, it, it's being able to keep the good and, and detach from the bad. And there, there was one thing that I read from Henry Rollins, and this was, you know, when I was in my like twenties, uh, Henry Rollins, I read, I read uh, a quote that he had, and I'm just paraphrasing, right? Yep. Uh, basically, he said that you have to uh, figuratively kill off your parents to really be the per, you know, your unique person, right? Interesting. And and. I, obviously he didn't mean kill your parents. He meant figuratively, obviously. And, uh, but I always go back to that and go, yeah, like for me to be me, I have to, to cut the cord and not follow in all these other things and not be led by legacy, right? Yeah. I, have, I have to uh, trailblaze my unique path to be who I am. And I've always taken that to heart I've always went, oh, well, you know, it, deep down in me, it says, don't do it. But there's something here that's saying you have to, you, you should do it. And I find that when I'm listening to this sort of like thing right in front of my brain to go, yeah. go, uh, it's usually the right thing, you know, yeah. not always, but usually the right thing. And I'm not uh, feeling that, uh, that pull backwards from previous relationships memories anything like that yeah. so uh, i i get that man i get i get the 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 that quote from from henry and to this day 20 odd years later right uh it's still i could Stuck still talk about it and go yeah yeah it, it's the right thing you know it's like you don't want to have like live through the legacy of what your parents are giving to you right you want to take the good you want to jettison the bad and yep. you want to make your own path. Well, you said something like early on uh, when you mentioned your father, he's talked about sort of like breaking the cycle. And that's sort of what, like, I guess what it is, right? Like, th yeah, you get programmed as a kid, like you can't help it. And we're programming our kids too. Like, you know, I see it in my daughter too. You know, she, I'm kind of, uh, I'm kind of like type A, I'm really like, you know, uh, regimented about like time and schedules, which is really a bad quality for a parent. Um, but you, you have to have that, like we were talking about introspection and, and being honest with yourself, you have to see that. And you have to know, okay, that came from this place. My mom was a lot like that. So I got that from my mom, but um, you have to see it. And then you have to like, swim upstream against it when when you need to, right? Like, it's like, okay, this is my default setting to be this way and be freaked out about time. But you know what? If we're five minutes late for soccer, who gives a shit? Like no one cares. So, you know, okay, I need to whoo, take a breath. Like let's move past that. And, and yeah, it is all about just kind of like figuring out who, what's, you know, what's, what part of your natural instinct is helpful and what's harmful and, and yeah. always working all right, working through that. I don't, I don't know what the answer is. It's not easy, but. There, well, there's no, there's no answer, man. It, it's a day-to-day -day thing, right? Yep. And it's like, you know, I, I, I've said it before and I like said it in passing in, in this interview, but it's like, you got to learn to surf, man. Like yep. there's yep. constant, there's constant waves that are coming, man. And you, you're going to either like, you have to learn to navigate those waves. Right. And you have to learn to surf it, man. If you don't learn to surf, you're going to get smashed by those waves. And like life for me has always been trying to learn how to surf those waves. Right. And just when you get used to like a set, oh, yeah, here's these like waves that are coming and you're used to surfing those waves, then here's this other wave that's coming and it's bigger and it's blown out and it's ugly and uh, you get smashed by it but that you have to learn that lesson and you have to, to take a little bit of knowledge and you have to learn to surf those types of things before, man. And if you don't learn to surf, dude, it's a very hard life. You have to yeah. learn to adapt. You have it being a parent, man, is all about adapting. It's all about learning to surf that wave because there's another gnarlier wave coming right behind that man. And like, I'm going to get smashed by that. And I'm going to have to learn how to do, you know, learn to surf that wave. And I'm going to have to figure it out. And dude, heading into like teen years and then adults, like, and 
my brain scrambles, but I'm going to have to relearn to surf, man. Yeah. Like, and it's great now. I'm like, I'm uh, vacation surfing, right? Like, oh, we're good, right? Like yeah. all this stuff. But <laughs> here, here, I know in the back of my mind, there, there's stuff that's that's back there that that I'm not prepared for that I'm going to have to learn how to be prepared for. You've got a kid and, entering middle school. So I hear like things sort of, that's when things sort of start to, to change uh, too. So I'm yeah, sure you're aware and, of that. But yeah, of course, you know, and, but that's, that's also part of it, right? You have to learn how to surf, but you also have to teach your kids how to surf at the same yes. time, right? So uh, it's tough. I love it's that tough. analogy. But it, it, but dude, it's so, it's so, 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 so true. And I, I wish that I could go back to my like, sort of like 30 year old self and go, dude, like, just take it as it comes. There's going to be like, you're going to get smashed so many times, but you're going to learn. And, and then it's going to be incrementally easier as things go. Right. But you learn from those like mistakes and, and you learn from a lot of stuff, man. Like, and I wish I could go back and say that to somebody like myself yeah. back then and just go, dude, like it's, it's okay. It's okay. Give yeah, yourself a break. Give yourself a fucking break. Like it's that simple. Hey, yeah. Well, we, we talked a little bit earlier about um, like celebrating the wins. So let's, let's talk about that a little bit. Like what's, what's the best thing about being a dad? What's the most rewarding thing about being a dad? I know that's a big question. Yeah, it is. Right. And I, since we've always like, you know, we, we had talked about, you know, connectedness and, and things like that. For me, the, the best thing about being a dad is, relearning stuff I thought I knew, but, but in a totally different perspective, right? Like about color and shape and cartoons and like, you know, Barbies and everything under the sun, dude. And my, my daughter, lo-fi music, right? And knowing about that and, and keeping an eye on Minecraft and, and playing Roblox and relearning like a lot of this stuff, man, that you forgot about and I, I appreciate sort of these little bits of knowledge coming at me and learning new stuff but relearning old things and looking at things from a different perspective and that's cool to me man that's super cool right and I think that as as my daughter gets older that, that's the that's the headspace and wavelength that I forever will be on being a dad from because I'm a dad that hey I, I I knew this back then but I could pick this up and and look at it in a different way and appreciate it for what it is right and in a totally different way than I did at 30 yeah. that I did at 20 that shit that I did at 40 I'm 50 right like so being able to look at it and go oh okay uh, you know I, and uh, to to bring it back you know, and to have punk rock music as like a soundtrack through all of this, right? Yeah. And to always go back to that and go, oh, you know, I, I love, you know, when I was 19, uh, Corrosion of Conformity, uh, Animosity record, right? And to be able to kind of take that back and, and listen to it again at 50 is a totally different headspace. And to go back and listen to Misfits or go back and listen to Blondie or go back and listen to Crim Shrine, which Crim Shrine as a, a lyric writer, Aaron Comet Bus was always the number one inspiration, right? Billy Bragg, number two, Bruce Springsteen, to be able to revisit those songs because I'm rewiring my brain being yeah. a dad and to go back and revisit in a different light as a different person, you know? And dude, it's, it's I'll, 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 take, I'll take that away forever right? Like until my eyes close for good, right? I, I will always be able to go back and re-examine things that I saw before and, and that I heard before that, and it was, it's all because I, 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 I am a dad, right? Like, and my daughter, no, we have to play Roblox. Okay. Like let's, okay. We'll play Roblox and, and check well, it out. Yeah. It's like, it changes your perspective, but like almost what I'm hearing from you is like, um, maybe I'm, maybe I'm paraphrasing wrong, but like, like we teach our kids a lot, right? Like basic stuff, survival, you know, those kinds of things. 
Um, and, but, but it's amazing how much they teach us about ourselves and about the world and how to look at the world. And so that it, like, that's, I think that's kind of where it comes from, right. Is true. Like you lose that as time goes on, you lose the ability to see the world in a, you know, in, in the way that kids see it. And so you sometimes, you get this gift of being able to see it through their eyes again. It, it's true. You know, it's like at a certain point, as you grow up, you know, it, it it's not a, a, a wide view, right? It, it starts to become the sort of tunnel vision as you're growing up, right? And we talked about that, you know, location where we're at, you know, your, your worldview becomes smaller and smaller and smaller until it's just the stuff that's in front of you, right? But when you become, you know, a, a parent, that sort of like blows apart that sort of that tunnel vision. And it really like kicks open that like, you know, panoramic view of, of the world and of your past and of the present and of the future, you know, and if you're paying attention to it, I, I, that's a beautiful thing, man, that, that you're beyond that, that point now of, oh, well, you know, I was caring about myself and, and my place in the world. And now you're worrying about, hey, here's this person's other person's place in the world. And this is my relationship. And this is how they see it. Yeah. And it's super, it's super cool, man. And like, I hope that, uh, that panoramic view stays forever, you know, and that as I go into like, you know, uh, my elder years, uh, it doesn't become that, uh, that, uh, very, you know, uh, localized viewpoint, you know, Again. Yeah, you have to accept that gift from your kids, right? And and use it. Because like, and we'll we'll move on from this shortly. But like, I think as an adult, it's so your tendency like to cope with things is to make them really small and really simple. And I think that's sometimes how you get in that mindset of like, this is, you know, um, like why people maybe move away from an open minded point of view, because it makes things much more complex. You have to try and understand things. Okay, like, instead of you know, that homeless guy on the street is, you know, like he did that to himself. That's an easy answer for you to cope with it and not feel bad about walking by and not doing anything. But when you think about where that person came from, or, you know, um, I was just talking to someone yesterday who was, who is going to be on the, the show too, but had said like, that was someone's kid, you know, um, like, sure. you know, like, those things are so much more complex to to figure out, but it gives you so much more joy in the world when you can understand those things. So um, I think our kids give us that gift and we can either accept it and, and grow with them and learn with them, or we can, you know, just stick to our easy way of coping. You know what? I, I hope, I hope, uh, you know, people are open enough, you know, that our parents to be able to accept that gift, you know, it's, yeah. but it's yeah. not for everybody, man. I, like true, sometimes, you know, people, People are, are content with with having their viewpoint and trying to impart that like sort of like very uh, that that tunnel vision onto their kids, right? And that's the the problem that that we have a lot of times where instead of you know parents are programming their kids, but they're programming in a way of having this like sort of uh, very uh, very narrow view instead of a panoramic view, right? And the teaching goes both ways when you're a parent. Uh, but if you're not accepting it back, uh, it becomes, for me, it, be, it, be, it becomes problematic. Right. Um, I want to talk about the museum a little bit. So has your, um, I'm, I'm sure she has, but has your daughter been to the museum? You know what? Not yet because she's oh. been in school, right? Right. Oh, I guess so. Right. Since you've opened, it's been school. Yeah. Yeah. It's been school, but we'll, we're going to go there uh, during the summertime and take a visit and walk through, you know, prior to it opening, it wasn't the right, it was a construction site. So yeah. it wasn't the right thing, you know, but it's funny because, you know, I'm in uh, my office now and she'd be sometimes sitting next to me and doing like homework I have a long, sort of long desk that go, that goes from wall to wall, and uh, so she hears like, "Oh yeah, this is what's going on, and this is what's going on, this is what the problem is, this is what the 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 good thing to celebrate is, and all of that." So uh, she's been there as it's been forming, you know, yeah. two and a half, it, it, two and a half, well more, two and three quarters years, you know, of the 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 inception of the idea to the current state right being open being 
you know, talking about programming and talking about events and things like that. So uh, it's pretty wild. So give me the Coles notes of how you got from that two and a half years ago, that initial seed um, to today. I mean, you're open for a few months now. Yeah, it's so exciting. Yeah, it, it is. You know, it's, it's funny because it's, you know, go back, uh, you know, those uh, two years and eight months ago, right? And I got a call from Fat Mike and he said, hey, I'm thinking about uh, opening a store called uh, Vegas Punk Shop. Uh, you know, have, you know, punk clothes and t-shirts, whatever. Oh, that's cool, man. He's like, and I, I'm a, I'm a merch head, like for less than Jake did all kinds of like, you know, limited edition stuff and, and all yeah. that. And I was like, okay. Well, I can tell from paper and plastic too, like. Yeah, it's yeah. crazy and stuff, right? So for me, I was like, dude, I'm totally in. So he was like, I'll get back to you in a few days. So uh, he calls me and he's like, hey, do you remember that like uh, thing I was talking about? I'm like, totally, dude. And he was like, so forget that. I was talking to Lisa, which is Lisa Brownlee. Yeah. And she was saying that like, uh, we should add some artifacts. And I was like, yeah, and like, yeah, man. And we should, you know, maybe it's going to be the punk rock museum. And we're going to have the, the, the retail shop still there, but we're going to do a museum now. Are you still in? I go, dude, of course, you know, and <laughs> uh, that, that led into, you know, about uh, five of us coming together and you know, business being started and plans and artifacts and wish lists and everything going down, you know, investments and you know, building a deck and all these things that like, you know, I, I was been on the fringes through Fuel by Ramen and, and through Less Than Jake of, of building a business and building a brand and, and kind of uh, jumping into it head first. Sometimes you get it wrong. Sometimes you get it right, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, so, I, you know, again, I knew how to surf that wave. And I, I surfed that wave, right? Yep. And it's been awesome. And I, I, utmost respect to my my fellow uh punk collective members who who worked hard man on on figuring out how to accession artifacts how to store artifacts and you know everything under the sun it, it's all a learning process but it's at the same time flying the flag for our passion for punk rock music right yeah. so uh the default is always I, I already know what this is because I love it. I've been involved in it for, for, you know, four decades of my life. Right. Yeah. Like, uh, so, uh, cool. I, I understand. And your default is the love and passion for punk rock music. Uh, so you, you just kind of go with that. So, you know, ups and downs and, and through construction delays and, everything that goes along with, with opening a business and opening a 12,000 square foot business. Yeah. Like that, right. And not only having being a museum, but being a bar, being a yeah. tattoo shop, having a jam room, figuring out, you know, uh, everything that goes along with that, uh, with a wedding chapel, people. wedding chapel, wake, <laughs> wake, wake, a place for wakes for, you know, it's the same. Uh, it, it's, it's wild, dude. It's, it's wild because I respect everybody that I work with fanboy for some people that I also work with too. Right. Yep. Uh, I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm not, uh, that's not below me. Like I, I go fuck like that, that person loved their songs, love them as a individual, but love them as an artist even more. Right. So, mm -hmm. uh, it, it's cool. It's cool to be, uh, in that space, right, and and allow to to still love punk rock, but uh, uh, kind of float in and out business wise with it, right? Yeah, I like that co like collective idea. It's it really brings you back to those, you know, like I think about early days where I grew up, like we had this punk collective that put on shows and you'd find a place to do it. And someone would, you know, make the posters and someone would, you know, whatever, get the equipment. And that's just, that's that DIY kind of ethos that comes behind it. And I, I love that that's kind of a part of how you structured this. You know what, but it, it also goes back to that, like, you know, you've got to learn to surf, man. Like you, you have to, 
for every person that's involved is an individual headspace and an idea, right? So I always thought, oh man, like there's four other people and less than Jake that I have to like talk about stuff with. Now imagine it, you know, being infinitely more for some, some big decisions, you know? And you really have to like kind of uh, focus on, okay, this is what I'm passionate about. And this is what I'm trying to communicate to a group of people. And sometimes you have to jettison things that you're not ultra passionate about, right? But that's the, the, the pros and cons of working as a team, right? That mm -hmm. it's not all your, your idea, your way, your everything. Uh, it's everybody's, you know? And it's, you know, you have to boil it you know, you have to boil it down to the most condensed version possible, right? Yeah. And some things you go, I, I, I don't know why I'm, I'm uh, trying to li like labor over this. It's let it go. You know, if somebody is so passionate that they're going to it, then that's their passion, man, and let them have it. And uh, it, it's, it's uh, learning to do that though, right? Learning yeah. to go, oh, it's not about like an ego. It's not about uh, you thinking you're right. It's just about what the collective thinks is correct. And, you know, someone's super passionate about something, letting them uh, take their passion and run with it, man, and support, right? And I, leave, leaving leaving the band and then doing the museum, uh, I've constantly went, I, I'm in the support side of it, right? Yeah. If someone wants to do this, I'll be there to help. Uh, hey, I, I want to do this, but I don't know how to do it. Okay, let's figure out how to do it. I'm, I'm there to, to support. And that's, uh, I, I've, I've learned that, but I've learned that in a, and applied it in so much other stuff. And if we're going back to being a dad, it's the same thing. And it's about being a, a good partner and a good yep. parent and a good business partner and a good associate and everything that goes with it. It's learning to support other people. And that's it, man. Like it, it, there's no, there's no other larger chemistry at play. There's no bigger message at play. It's learning to support other people when you can recognize that it's important to yeah. them. Right. That's kind of, you know, it's a bit, a bit of a metaphor for the punk scene in general, right? It's kind of lifting people, lifting, lifting people up. Um, have you had feedback from people who've come with their kids? I've seen on social media, people have, have come with their kids. And you know what I've, I've, I've seen a lot was like, Hey, uh, I loved it for the, the Pennywise and no effects and the fat records and epitaphs. Uh, and my kid loved it because you had my chemical romance uh, yeah. up on the second floor and all this other stuff. And uh, I, I've heard a few things where, you know, there was a mom and a daughter there last time I was there. And uh, the mom was like, oh, yeah, I, I, you know, my daughter was showing me like some of the stuff I, I, I heard about, but that didn't recognize. And I was showing her some of the stuff that was happening for me when I was growing up. And uh, that's cool because that's what it's supposed to be, right? It's supposed to be that opportunity for someone who's totally into New York hardcore to go, oh, I, I there's the West Coast equivalent of what was going on, and, yeah. and here it is. Oh, here's the pop up scene from uh, from uh, the Midwest. Well, it was going on in J in Japan at the same time, and here's all these interconnections, and I think that like. Uh, that that's the beautiful thing, man. Like, and that's why punk rock is generational, right? Yep. And, and and you can really go and uh, there. The museum is great for that particular thing, but the the most uh, like exact thing that I'm talking about is the Rebellion Festival in Blackpool, England, right? And less than Jake had played it, but it was the first time that I saw the grandfather who was a punk. Their, their their son or daughter, which was a punk, and then their son or daughter, which was also a punk. And so it was going from like 65, 45, 20. 
And I was That's like, awesome. I can't, I can't believe it. Right. And seeing it generational, seeing, you know, uh, families dance, there was uh, this band Sweet, which was like sort of like kind of uh, early glammy, right. And kind of leaned on that. They were playing right before Lesson Jake. And seeing everybody like singing like Fox on the Run, that song, yeah. like the master song for them, right? And everybody singing it in the family going, this is rad, so rad, right? And yeah. uh, it used to be called, uh, the festival used to be called Holiday in the Sun, right? And they switched it over to Rebellion, the name. But uh, dude, so, so classic, man. And so awesome to be able to see all of that happen. And, and uh, you know, it, the, the sort of musical wisdom sort of handed down through three generations already. And I hope that the museum could be that one day where it was like, yeah. Oh, yeah, I, I came and now my kid came and now uh, their kid is here and we're, we're, we're all doing it together. And there's a, a long way to go for roots to be able to do that, but uh, it would be cool to be able to have that happen. Oh, that's amazing. You're reminding me of, um, I was at Punk and Drublick this last uh, September. Descendants were playing and I was, I'm a big Descendants fan. You can probably see behind me. I'm, I'm wearing the, the Punk Rock Museum shirt here too. Um, so I was right up at the front, but right in front of me was this, uh, this guy and he was maybe like in his, I don't know, maybe late fifties and a younger guy right beside him and got talking with him and he was there with his son. So this was his son beside him. And his son's like huge Descendants fan, had never seen him. And the last time this guy saw Descendants was in 1980 something. And he's like, this is so awesome. And they were just going off during the show. It was so amazing to see. Oh. And I was just, you know, got to sort of stand there and experience that. So um, yeah, it is cool. And that's neat how, um, how you can share that across generations. Well, Rad Dads um, and Punk Rock Museum are, you know, we're entering let's we're calling it father's week we're taking a whole week this year father's week um this episode is coming out on on the monday uh before father's day um we're going to be down there in a couple of weeks too uh, for the canadian connection uh tours with kj jansen and uh, grant lawrence and um t tell us a little bit about i may be putting you on the spot here because we kind of just came up with some of this stuff but tell us a little bit about what punk rock museum is doing uh for for Father's Day, I know uh, we're talking about uh, rad dad admission. Yep, of, of course we're going to. Uh, as it stands right now, yep. we're going to do a uh, kids bring your father to the museum uh, for your dad to get in for free. Uh, we're going to do some uh, dad specific flash at the tattoo shop. Nice. Uh, we're the museum and rad dad show will be giving away some tickets as well right yeah uh so uh and we have one or two other things that are in play we don't know yet if it's a a real thing yet but we'll see okay we're, we're okay well we're forming things are forming yeah stay tuned we'll obviously have lots of information for people um when all this stuff launches i hear there might be a, a drink at the bar too a special uh drink at the bar so Lots of fun things happening this week. I'm super stoked. It's fun to to work on this with you guys. I think you guys are doing something really amazing. And unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to bring my kids down there this time. But um, at some point, I will for sure. Because, you know, it's funny, like to bring it back, like kids look at what we didn't really talk about this much, but kids look at what you're interested in, and they get stoked on what you're interested in, too. You talked about your daughter sort of being down the desk from you and listening to your conversations and, and they can sense your energy and what you're passionate about. And so I think that's a neat thing to have the, the punk rock museum for, for people to, you know, bring their family to bring their friends to and help them kind of get a, a view of something that's been so important in their life. So it's neat to have that, um, that home base for us now. You know what I, you know, uh, Fat Mike had said, you know, it's like uh, the church of punk rock, the Mecca yeah. of punk, right? Uh, I get down with that, man. I, I think that, you know, you're, you you have twelve thousand square foot of a, a feet of a place uh, that you could go walk down memory lane, right? And you can go, oh, you know, here's you know, uh, Offspring and Green Day, but here's Black Flag and Pennywise and No Effects and but hey, check this out. I saw, you know, 
this band came over from Japan and played with no effect. So check it out. And it's such a cool way to be able to show people, uh, you know, hey, this was, I, I was, punk rock music was my everything when I was 16 and through 18 or 16 through 65. Who the fuck knows, right? Like, and hey, I'm going to show you why my passion, I'm going to show it and being able to have that building and, and, have people go through and share memories. And it truly becomes like the, the sort of a living museum, right? And, and have people who still, uh, you know, live through it, still be around through like tour guides and things like that to go, hey, like this, I was at that Black Flag, you know, Black Flag show where the cops came and there was this. Hey, I was at the, you know, the Less Than Jake show where you guys did a, figure eight circle pit I can't believe it and I saw the guy in the mask and he was blowing fire whatever but like uh it's just a cool place you know if you love punk rock music to be able to take other people and show them uh why you loved it and how you loved it yeah well it's been so awesome talking to you Vinny thank you so much I'm stoked for this week for father's week we coined it here um I'm any down. uh any advice for dads out there listening? Um, maybe maybe new dads or dads to be. Um, you you gave some good advice earlier, like you've talked to, about surfing the waves, um, you know, and it's it's just going to be okay, and you just you're going to be fine. Okay, but you know I I was going to say if if I could give anything to anyone, it's learn to surf, man. Like yeah. you're gonna get you're gonna get smashed a bunch of times by waves, man, but you're gonna learn a little bit every time. You're gonna learn how to surf those waves you know that there's going to be a gnarly one that's coming, man. That's going to take you by surprise, but you're going to learn from that dude. And just got to learn to surf, man. And, and be, be, you know, uh, give yourself a break, man. No one, no one is here knowing that, you know, everything, right? Like there's mistakes that you're going to do as a dad and as a parent, but you got to learn from those things. You got to be light on yourself, right? As taken from someone who, I've had my fair share of beating myself up over mistakes that I've made, right? Uh, as a dad, as a human, right? But dude, be light on yourself, man. Go easy on yourself. Go easy on your partner. No one, no one has a roadmap of how to do these things, you know? And you're, you're in the water already, man. You know, enjoy that, that water, you know? Enjoy surfing, you know, surfing those waves. And that's it. And like, it's just be, be, be good to yourself. That's great be advice. Good, you know, thanks, man. It's great t chatting with you and uh, looking forward to this week. It's gonna be great. Yeah.